a Curascale Manor class today. I'm just panning around the uh, the model here, just checking it out for any dust or fingerprints and things like that. I fitted a crew, well, half a crew. They've got the fireman in there, I haven't put the driver in yet. Um, and now I've taped up all the areas that I don't want to get the gloss varnish on. That's the first thing I'm gonna do, gloss the, gloss the boiler um, and gloss the sides of the tender as well. So I'm just cleaning it up a bit there and then whipping the airbrush out. I've just put the gloss varnish straight into the airbrush and I've covered this loads of times, but I'm going to say it again. It's easier just to do a few thin coats of the gloss, gloss varnish rather than just coating the model in it. Then you just get a much smoother coat. Going for quite a clean look on um, this locomotive. I put two reference photos in here. One's a lot better quality than the other, but that's the look I'm going for. Worn and work used, but quite clean at the same time. Just making sure I catch the back of the tender there as well. And then I'm just picking out the cylinders as well. Just adding a bit of shine to those. There we go, whipping the tape off. And we can get some paints in the airbrush now as well. So I'm using the same three colors that I always use, which is XF64, which is brown, 63, which is just a, a gray color, and then one, which is their matte black. Um, no method really to mix in these. I'm just putting a few blobs of each to try and get the color right. Um, I'm going to slightly more heavier on the brown at first because I'm going to do the underframe first. And then I'll add a bit more gray and a bit more black when I go over the smoke box and the cab roof uh, and the tender as well. I haven't got the angle quite right here. You see my hand keeps getting in the way of the camera, so apologies. So I'm just going over the running board, um, the wheels, um, and trying to avoid spraying the boiler if I can but if you get some paint on there it's not the end of the world you can just use a cotton swab dip it in a bit of water and uh, wash it up it wash it off if you're using acrylics if you need to use thinners if you're using enamels but I tend to stick with acrylics just because they're a bit easier to use I love this mix straight away you can see all the details starting to pop out as soon as you get that slightly lighter color on the um, on the underframe there So I sprayed some of this color on the roof here, then realized it's way too, too light, too brown. I want that to be a bit dark, so I'll come back and go over that. One thing to bear in mind here is that you need to make sure you turn the wheels so you can um, make, completely cover them, else you're gonna have um, clean lines where the connecting rods were. So I'll get the battery out and, uh, and move those around a bit in a minute. I'm using that bit of tape there just to make sure I've got the right amount of paint coming out of the airbrush. Doing the back of the tender, got my hand in the way again, sorry. So this is a bit of a base coat really. Here I just realized the uh, the water um, hatch opens on this. Someone pointed that out in the comments but the first on the last video, but that's the first time I've actually uh, tried it and it was accidental, but that's a nice touch. Not worried about getting paint on the on the uh, coal load because I'm going to put a coal load over the top. Right, I've put in slightly more black in the in the airbrush now and left the original colours in there. So I'm just going to go over that cab roof again just to give it a slightly more grey look. And then I'm doing the smoke box now as well and just making sure I'm keeping the um paint off the shiny boiler so you can get the contrast between the the gloss boiler and then the matte smoke box as i mentioned earlier just spinning the wheels just to make sure i can cover them all you can see the um the bits that have been covered by the connecting rod there i think the airbrush got a little bit blocked at this point so i had to work to unblock it again there we go sorted and that is the 
locomotive up to this point. So now I've got my cotton bud. Again, I've not got the angle quite right here. I've dipped that in isopropyl alcohol and I'm just taking some of the paint off on the buffer beam to bring that um, shiny red color back out again. And then I'm doing the same on the smoke, bo uh, smoke box door number and on the shed code just below it. And then the same on the rear as well. I've got a slightly better angle of this so you can see what I'm doing, but I'm just making sure I'm leaving plenty of um, the paint in the recesses there just so it looks nicely weathered and nicely grimy. And then I thought I'd do the same thing for this, um, the warning uh, bracket thing on the bunker. So I've dipped the cotton bud in some matte black paint here just to dip on the buffers to add a bit of grease and now I'm onto the powders so I've got my brown weathering powder my black weathering powder and my rust weathering powder to use this is the this is the smoke color or the black color I'm just putting this over the smoke box door which just gives it a nice sooty texture getting a bit on the chimney there as well on the smoke box door and a bit around the base Exact same thing for the cab roof, just getting some smoky weathering powder on the top. And then for the uh, rear of the coal space and in the coal bunker itself, I'm using a bit of rust weathering powder and a bit of um, brown weathering powder, it's called earth, I think. Um, also adding that to the underframe, a bit of rust to the steps near where the, the water pipe is there you can see that under the, the steps in, on, the, on the back of the locomotive um, and just like a little bit here and there as well just to add a bit of variation adding this little bit of brown rust just there to the front of the frame and i realized i'd sprayed quite a lot of paint over the nameplate which i wanted to keep quite clean so i've just dipped a cotton bud in a bit of water and i'm just cleaning that up a little bit same for the cylinders for the coal load, I wanted to make pile the coal up quite high. I've seen some pictures of the the manors back in the day with, and they've they've stacked the coal um, load up way higher than the actual tender. So I thought that was quite interesting. Um, I'm using the classic um, PVA glue, water, and a few drops of washing up liquid to break the surface tension. And I'm just layering a bit more coal on top to build up that that pile. And after waiting for that to dry, that is the finished locomotive. I'll just give you a pan around so you can see how it's turned out. Again, I've tried to keep this relatively clean because I think the engines that pulled the Cambrian Coast Express and those named trains were kept relatively clean, even up to the end of steam. Um, I really like how the coal loads turned out. Uh, I've got the the driver in there now, although he's a little bit short, he's leaning out the cab and his legs are dangling off the floor, so I might have to might have to look at that, but yeah, he looks okay. Um, I've got a bit of coal spilling out into the where the water space is as well, which I like the look of. I've got the, the um, KD couplings fitted and attached some coaches, which is looking good. And there's the underframe, hopefully it all blends in with the the same weathering that I've done on the track. I've also fitted the etched plates that come with the the model as well and some of the details. So there it is, that's the finished um, manor. So I hope you enjoyed that, I thought it was useful. And um, again, I'll put an affiliate link for a Curious Gale uh, in the description. So if you want to pick one of those up, um, you can use that link and I think you might get a little bit of a discount and I get something back as well. So I hope you enjoyed that, thank you.